Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So let's just get on to our next chapter that is chapter number 6. The name of the chapter is Keynesian System Part 2 Money, Interest and Income. So in this very chapter we will be talking about determination of rate of interest. So let's just get started. But just a one minute disclaimer that I am really really assuming that you people already know what the entire five chapter is all about. We have number one, two, three, four, five. We ought to have a complete hold over everything that we have studied up till now in order to understand this very chapter because there is a lot of asymmetry information here. It's quite unusual experience to teach online because economics is a subject where there has to be a lot of interaction. But again, it's not possible. So I just am assuming that we know what there are the things up till chapter five. So as it's going to be really convincing easy on my part to assume this way so that I am not supposed to just keep on dragging this video unnecessarily just keep on repeating myself so yes I'll be really really very very precise in my explanation because a lot of explanation has already been done so let's just get started enough of lecture all right so this chapter explains that role of money and the interest rate in the Keynesian system and construct a model that shows how interest rate and income are jointly determined. Forget about this. Right now, we'll be just thinking about what exactly is the rate of interest. No talking about in relationship between interest and income, no nothing. Just keeping things simple. Let's put things into perspective. What exactly is the money supply, money demand, rate of interest in the Keynesian system? All right. Fundamental to Keynes' theory of money was the view that money affects income via the interest rate. What exactly does this mean? We're going to be talking about this in a very, very detailed manner, but not now. This is not needed now. What's needed is just to understand how we're going to determine the rate of interest. Let's determine the rate of interest first, then we'll talk about all the income relation and all. All right. So what is investment demand? Quite obvious, investment demand is demand for investment and it depends on interest rate. As Classical have also stated this very thing, Keynes also stated this thing that yes, investment demand is something that is inversely related to rate of interest and by so, we already know. No more explanation now. Alright, so if somebody is directly watching this very video, then I'm sure they're gonna not like it, but then this is how it is. We really can just keep on lengthening the video by unnecessary explanation. We know why investment demand is inversely related to rate of interest. We have dedicated a complete video on this very topic. Alright, so this is directly how we're gonna be driving the investment demand curve. Higher the rate of interest, lower shall be the investment. Lower the rate of interest, higher shall be the investment. Quite simple. All right, and then we're gonna be showcasing this very investment demand into our aggregate expenditure income model. So if investment goes up, aggregate demand curve shifts upwards and income goes up. If investment goes down, aggregate demand curves shift downwards and income falls, equilibrium income falls. We already know what exactly all these things are. No more further explanation here. All right, now we are on to the main topic of this chapter and we'll proceed quite smoothly quite in a very patient way from this topic onwards up till now it was just the revision sort of thing all right the keynesian theory of the interest rate so keynes believed that quantity of money played a key role in determination in the rate of interest please memorize this thing by heart quantity of money plays a key role a very important role in determination of rate of interest now let's just pause a bit and contrast it with the classical version what does classical economists say they say that classical economists say that quantity of money determines what it determines price level in the economy higher the quantity of money high shall be the price level and so high shall be the nominal income but in case of Keynesian, quantity of money is definitely not impacting prices. Rather, it is determining, playing a very important role in determination of rate of interest. All right. And what plays an important role in the rate of interest determination in the case of classical economics? Quantity of money? No. 
the supply and demand of loanable funds so this these two are the main differences that we have understood between the keynes and the classicals by reading the first line of keynes itself so yes keynes believe quantity of money determines rate of interest all right and we going to be seeing how but let's just undertake certain simplified assumptions here so keynes assume that there are just two way to spend money either money or to buy that money to to use that money to buy bonds so money means money and bonds mean bonds but we will be seeing what bonds are because we are studying economics as a subject so generic knowledge is not enough so keynes assume that all financial assets can be divided into two groups money and non money so this is a drawback here because we know that we got lot other classifications also but yes keynes system money non money non money assets mean bonds and again money is highly liquid it means like we have money we can go to store and we can buy anything we need bonds are comparatively less liquid so for example if we have a bond and we go to market and we ask for what we ask for let's say laptop with chocolates and they're not going to give us these commodities because they are not bound to accept bonds so bonds are less liquid and as such what exactly is the liquidity it is the property by which the easiness with which an asset can be converted into a currency so for example gold is there which is highly liquid if today we have gold and we go to a store they're going to immediately give us the money and buy that gold so we can immediately convert the gold into a currency format but if we have building and we just want to convert into a currency it at least going to take a year or 6 month at least but so it's a not it's not liquid all right now what exactly is the liquidity preference so definitely preference for liquidity is liquidity pre preference and liquidity is what liquidity is money so keynes termed his demand for the money asset as liquidity preference so it's like we want to keep money into liquid form and that is our liquidity preference all right now we're going to be undertaking one more assumption that money supply so definitely money quantity of money determines the rate of interest quantity of money here means the money supply and money demand but what exactly is the money supply so we know there are four components of money supply into the economy m1 component m2 m3 m4 what is m1 so we all have studied economics from runal sir so we know what these components are m1 is definitely a currency held by people and kasa that is current account saving account m2 we don't really need to understand m2 but again because we are talking about this exam in a very holistic manner so it's good to have a broad understanding what exactly is m2 this should be at tips of our finger it should be quickly coming into our mind that yes m2 is this so what is m2 m2 is m1 plus deposits saving deposits with the post office then what is m3 m3 is m1 plus term deposits also and m3 is broad money because 3 is like b so m3 becomes broad money all right what is m4 m4 is again m3 plus all the deposits of the public of the post office excluding national saving certificates so these things should also be clear what exactly these components are so definitely from m1 to m2 m3 m4 the liquidity keeps on decreasing but the money base keeps on increasing so liquidity decreasing money base increasing this is how it is so m1 is the most liquid money we, we can say so as per keynesian economics money supply means just m1 that is currency held with the public plus kasa current account saving account that's it all right then what exactly is bonds then bonds are perpetuities what is perpetuity perpetuity is something which doesn't have any end which just has no end so bonds we are assuming they are never paid back the principal amount is never paid back all bonds yield is the interest that we are getting on to it that's it no repayment of principal over it that's why bonds are perpetuities so we got two assumptions here money supplies m1 component bonds are perpetuities all right now keen stated that entire wealth can be held either in the form of bond or in the form of money quite simple this again is simple the highlighted portion that if person is 
satisfied with its money holding that by default he or she would be satisfied with the bond holding also so equilibrium in one market means equilibrium in other market if person is happy with the quantity of money she is having it means she is happy with the bond holding also but if she is thinking that the money holding is less it means she is having excess of bond so she is not satisfied with either case so satisfaction in one market means satisfaction in other this is what it means so let's just read the heightened portion now in terms of equilibrium position this means that a person who is satisfied with the level of money holding relative to the total wealth is by definition satisfied with the bond holdings also quite simple further equilibrium in one market implies equilibrium with other as i have already i'm so sorry as i have already explained now equilibrium determination of interest rate determination of equilibrium interest rate again money supply exogenously fixed by the central government has no relation with the rate of interest all right money demand inversely related why exactly is it inversely related we'll see when we talk about the individual components of the money demand but let's just proceed as per this very book and here we have already seen the determination if money supply money demand is downward sloping money supply is quite inelastic then this intersection gonna determine the equilibrium level of rate of interest and that turns out to be r0 and this is it now let's just talk about the demand for the money what are the components of the money demand we'll talk about two components only that is transaction demand and precautionary demand because speculative demand is something that i would say is very which understanding about which is quite important for us to understand many other concepts also so we'll talk about speculative demand in our next video because i'm short of time little short of time right now so we'll end with the precautionary demand okay transaction demand is what so transaction means what transaction means buying goods and services so individuals hold money to be used to carry out transactions all right and higher our level of income more will be into buying goods and services more will be our volume of transactions so in a way we can state that transaction demand of money is assumed to depend positively on income you can have other ideas also but right now we just have to simplify this model and this is our assumption and either way it's true broadly at a macro level it's true slight deviations are always there but broadly it's true so yeah nothing wrong or unusual in this assumption so transaction demand for money is assumed to depend positively on income that means higher the income high shall be the transaction demand this is what it is for the but again a slight component is again there but keynes as such ignored this thing and what exactly is the, is this thing so it says that if suppose the interest rate is high so we know money asset yields no return money lying idle in our cupboard it yields no income no rate of interest but definitely if we are to spend it into buying bond it gonna give us interest rate and that is our income so if in interest rate is high it means people gonna be sort of into incentives to economize their transaction balance they would be sort of into the pressure to reduce their transaction balance so as to gain the interest rate so this is what it is if higher the, is the rate of interest we might come across a scenario where the transaction demand is low that people are going to economize on the transaction balance but keynes ignored this very aspect so yeah just for the sake of explanation i have explained but for our very model all we have to keep in mind is that transaction demand is simply demand for undertaking transaction and it is positively related to income all right further second is the precautionary demand so precaution means precautions like precaution means precautions to meet any unexpected expenditure people can fall ill any bad thing can happen so we just have to have some sort of money with us we can just end up depositing our entire amount into the bank account we have to keep a certain portion at our home with us in order to meet these unforeseen circumstances so this is what precautionary demand is but again it is also a positively related to the income level if income level is high he will be more cautious he will be like this can also happen that can also happen so he will be willing to hold more and more money as a precautionary balance so again this is also positively related with the level of income and again people can economize on to precautionary balance also if they think that they are losing a big amount by not buying bonds in 
by not buying bonds and by losing the rate of interest that they would otherwise have gotten so but we just have to ignore this very component the economizing part we have to ignore just for the sake of explanation i have explained largely the relation has turned out to be that both precautionary demand and the transaction demand they are positively related to the level of income so if they are positively related to level of income so we can club them into one only and this is what the author has done so subsuming these two components into one so yeah if you have talked about what exactly the money supply is what is the bond what is the role of quantity of money in the keynesian model what is precautionary demand what is spec no not speculative demand what is transaction demand and finally we just had a sneak peek into what is how is interest rate determined but we'll of course go into detail of this so do watch this video and I mean, if you're listening, then you must have already been watching. But the point is, do read Freud. After watching it, please read Freud so that everything gets clear. Okay, UPSC Freud's question to confuse us. So please, please read the book on your own. Also, that's it. It's just a supplementary to the reading on your own things. Okay, so this is it, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. In our next lecture, we'll talk about the speculative demand, and it's a long chapter. Most probably, we're gonna be taking three days to finish it off. All right. Goodbye.